Hi, this is Clarissa again. I am a Club Pilates Master Trainer coming to you with a couple of tips on how you can become a more effective and efficient cure in your classes. Now, I'm not just going to talk about Club Pilates. I'm also going to mention a few things that I learned um, during my classical certification as well. Um, the number one tip in just my humble opinion is that you need to know the exercises that you're going to teach either prior or at least to have them in your body so that way you know exactly what they are, exactly what they feel like, and you know exactly where their body should be. So from a Club Pilates perspective, you should know piece R and R, and the P is the placement, the E is the exercise name, the A is the action, the C is the control, the E, you want to make sure that you explain the breath, and then return and repeat. Um, make sure that you're following those. That will help you minimize the added words when it comes to cueing. From a classical standpoint and something that I use often, I use both, but I really hone in on this, is I think about the setup, the execution, and then the action followed by a powerhouse cue, simply meaning a cue that's going to help them engage or maximize the client's effort. Both of those work effectively and you can even use them or intertwine them as I do, but that's what helps me um, when it comes to cueing. Another thing that you want to do when you are cueing your client is you want to actually look and observe your client. So there's no need to just say things that they're already doing. Say things that you need them to do. So for example, if their leg is already up in the air, there's no need to say, bring your leg up in the air. If their foot is already pointed, there's no need to say, point your foot. Only cue to what you need your client to do or what they are not currently doing. That leads me to my next point. Cue to the positive. Cue to what you want them to do and what you want them instead of what you don't want them to do, if that makes sense. So if I see someone bring their arm up towards the ceiling, I say, shoulders away from your ears. Instead of saying, don't bring your arm up so high, bring your shoulder down. You see how many extra words that was when I could have just said, okay, now slowly roll your shoulder down your back pocket or bring your shoulders away from your ears. Three or four words, it gets me to the point and it's super efficient and effective. Something that I also do when I cue is I use imagery that is relatable to my client. So for example, if I am teaching a group of women who are say 60 and up, I'm going to use cues that are going to be relatable to things that they might see and do in their everyday life. So for example, someone who's probably 60 years old, there's a good chance that they know who Elvis is or, I, or Abba or something that was going on in the 70s. So I might reference something from that time period or era that they might like. Something that I use in particularly for when I'm cueing pelvic rocks or pelvic curls is I say Elvis pelvis because Elvis, he thrust his pelvis forward when he was trying to find imprint. And then I tell them to relax or arch the back. So I try to use cues that are synonymous to what either my clients are experiencing, have done, or sometimes I even make it as specific as their age group. Another example is when I have my uh, athletes or football players that I train, I use a lot of um, anatomical cues um, just because that's what their athletic trainer is using. Um, or I use body parts. I say hips, shoulder, head, shoulder, knees, and toes. You really can't go wrong when you take it to the basics. Um, so I use a lot of cues like that when it comes to training just athletes or even somebody brand new to Pilates. I just use words like, I use body part cues, all right? That's something that works. Um, I avoid over-explaining, especially when it, become, when it comes to beginners. Um, something that I find is really effective for me is I use simple words like up, down. You know, I point to where I want them to go. I use my hands when I want them to stop 
or I use my finger when I want them to go up or when I want them to go down. Um, less is truly more, especially when it comes to training beginners. And I really hone in on just the gross motor pattern in all of my level one classes. So what does that mean? I just look for, are they understanding what I'm doing, what I'm saying, and are they doing the exercise to the, to the simplest form in what I just said? All right. In a 1.5 or an intermediate level class, I then look beyond the gross motor pattern and I look for, okay, now it's time to start refining that movement. So I'll give you an example. If they are doing footwork on the reformer and say they're doing running, right? In a beginner class, I just want to see that their feet are moving. One foot is lifting up and the other one is lifting as the other one is going down. Maybe they pause, whatever that looks like. In an intermediate or advanced level class, I'm looking for them to really start to elevate their heel as one foot goes down. And I really want them to stay on the ball of their foot. And I focus more on the uh, reciprocity of the exercise. So are, as, one, as one is going down, the other one is going up. And they're moving fluidly. fluidly. Ah, I can't even get my words right. It's finding a flow. They're moving um, with fluidity. That's the right word. That's what I'm looking more. So that's what I'm looking for in a 1.5 or an intermediate or in an advanced class. I'm looking to see, okay, are all 10 are all ten toes spread onto the foot bar? Is their pinky toe getting involved in it? Are they starting to roll in towards their big toe or roll out towards their pinky side of the foot? That's when I start looking at the movement and refining it and working them in a better alignment. So that's just a small example of something that can kind of help with cueing. Um, and also, I use tactile cues. You know, of, of course, you want to make sure that you ask for permission when giving a tactile cue. But I use a lot of move in to me cues and move away from me um, tactile cues when it comes to teaching. So what does that mean? When I place my hand over somebody's head, I ask them to move into my hand. When I want them to move away from me, I might place their hand onto their to their client's shoulder and ask them to press maybe their shoulder blade or away from my hand. So that way I know that their latissimus dorsi muscle or the back of their shoulder is engaged um, and moving well. So those are just a quick few tips that I use to help me find um, the best ways to have the most effective cueing. Feel free to drop a comment or leave something um, in the comment section on if you have any questions or anything that I should have added that I didn't say. Hope this helped. Take care. Bye.